ladies and gentlemen welcome to the technical session 3 and um, this session will be chaired by Ms. Kumudini Saras Chandra, Senior Lecturer of IIT. Ms. Kumudini, over to you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back after the tea. So this is our last uh, session. Uh, we have four papers to be presented in this uh, session. So I think there's a small request if the presenters can uh, present only the relevant or the most important content and skip the slides if it is not very significant. Right? So let me um, invite our the first presenter for this session, um, Erandi, who is presenting Mamait, one of the technology solution to a action research that she has done under her final year project. Over to Erandi. So good afternoon everyone, I'm Mirandi Lienagamide and today I'm excited to present about my research which is Mamaid, a mobile application for postpartum mothers in reestablishing their health. So before we dig deeper into the presentation, I would like to give you all a brief understanding about the problem identified here. So did you all know uh, that the prevalence of postpartum depression is estimated to be 18% worldwide? Probably no, right? So if we talk about this problem a little bit more. so. Usually in women's life cycle, the postpartum stage is a crucial life cycle. And in this stage, most mothers doesn't necessarily take care of their health, which results in most postpartum complications being overlooked. And one of the most common postpartum complication is postpartum depression, and that some people aren't even aware. So as of right now, there's no appropriate application that is handling both mental and physical aspects of the, these postpartum complications. So to address those issues, I've developed my research and moving forward, what are the causes of this problem that I've identified? So there's appetite change, weight gain and weight retention, postpartum depression, and also lack of knowledge. So if for instance, if you take appetite change, the reason for this is not taking enough nutrition, also having lifestyle changes because of the baby, and eating just because you, the nutrition is needed for the body. And if you take another issue, such as weight gain and retention, there's also, again, the lifestyle changes, unmatched meal plans, and also having no proper exercise routine to conduct themselves off. And similarly, postpartum depression and lack of knowledge have their own underlying causes <laughs> as well. So to go ahead with those issues, I've developed my uh, project aim, or the research aim, which is to analyze the difficulties faced by uh, post mothers in the postpartum stage and to design, develop, test and evaluate an application that supports them to recover and to re-establish their health. So to start off my research, I've done my literature survey findings. So the first one, as you can see, is the literacy on postpartum complications. I have looked through the literacy and identified what are the, an overview of the postpartum complications and also the impact of it. Then I've moved on to the literacy of self-assessment and self-management. And in also there, I've uh, figured out what is the important uh, factors that are needed in self-assessment and self-management, and I've come up with methods uh, for postpartum mothers to conduct themselves on. So if you take a look at what are those methods, as, as you can see in the screen, some of those are self-monitoring the symptoms, also having a relaxation, and having engaging with activities, and also mainly having communication between your partner and your family as well. So what are the methodologies I've used here? So in here, I've done requirement gathering, uh, as for the phases, requirement gathering, analysis, design, development, and testing, and also evaluation. So in the requirement gathering, uh, I've conducted a pilot study for postpartum mothers, and also I've conducted interviews with practitioners, medical healthcare experts, and also other parties that are related to postpartum as well. And in the analysis stage, I have developed not developed, I'm sorry. Uh, in the analysis stage, I've identified the scope and what needs to be there and all the methodologies that are given in my uh, research as there. And in the design stage, I've done my solution architecture and also 
uh, designing my prototype and in the development stage and the testing stage the re relevant activities were carried out and in the evaluation stage uh, I've done an evaluation with the domain experts and also with the with my target audience regarding concept based and solution based models and with that uh, I've developed Mamaid, a mobile application for postpartum mothers to identify postpartum complications and also to assist them in regaining their health. So with that, my target audience, if I talk about my target audience, the focus group is postpartum mothers who are struggling with their health due to postpartum depressions and its complications. And also my age group, the target age group is 90 to 50 year old woman. And if I talk about my features, there's a postpartum depression screening test and there's also a meal plan recommendation system that is based on required protein intake, which runs under a rule-based model. And there's also a workout recommendation system for based on postpartum stage. And there's articles and blogs to read through. And there's, the, there's practitioner booking and getting their, uh, the mothers can get their meal plans and workout plans verified from practitioners in my application as well. And if I talk about what but my application is unique from what are currently existing in the market. As you can, as I previously mentioned, the meal plan recommendation is there, the practitioner booking is there, and also workout courses and verification is there. And coming into the end of my presentation, if we take key takeaways uh, about my research, that I have identified that most new mothers often neglect their health, which result in overlooking critical postpartum complications, and a suitable application that needs to be developed to address these issues, both mental and physical aspects. And currently, my pro proposed solution empowers new mothers to proactively identify these addresses and identify these postpartum complications at an early stage. And it results on uh, improving their mental health and will be moving forward. And with that being said, my presentation will be over. Thank you. Very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, actually, this is a very practical question. I don't know whether I took the uh, took your message properly. If I am wrong, please correct me. Uh, so you, you talk about something. So your idea is uh, in a uh, is still in the prototype stage or commercialized? Developed. developed and it is commercialized. But it, yeah. it is still at the yes. prototype the stage. Okay, why don't you talk to uh, Sri Lanka Inventors Commission and uh, do something? I think it, yes. it will be a great thing if you can do it that. Is, it's under my future recommendation. Okay, okay. right. So actually, uh, I think I, I just mentioned these things to the previous presenters also. Now here, you have shown uh, what you have done and how you have developed the system and all, right? But uh, we didn't get a chance to see your system. Yeah. So if you can show us uh, your prototype, then you know we uh, now, now the basics you have followed, right? So I think uh, when you go for public presentation like this, better you show the prototypes, or at least we call a user tester. Yeah, yeah user. Yeah, yeah. User test, right? The, the once you develop something, you ask uh, users, yeah, then you user you user take user. the uh, response, right? Yeah. So if you can do uh, that kind of a survey and give us the results here, yes. then we see that it's, it's working. Okay. So I actually done the survey, but uh -huh. the results are not displayed here. Yeah, that's the thing. Now, uh, when, you, when you go for a, uh, yes. yeah, this kind of a presentation, somehow you have to tell us, the audience, that yes. this product is working. Mm -hmm. It's yes. working. Uh, okay, yes. That's all. Thank you, Erandi. So I wish we had this type of application in my age. So I'm also a victim of this problem. <laughs> um, I think as judges were saying, I think uh, this project is a, a prototype developed project. But, uh, due to the, I think, conference regulations, I think they are not present in the prototype. But yes, the features or the screenshots should have been presented. Uh, to get a better understanding about the prototype, yes. Okay, let me um, invite the next presenter. Uh, is a, a business management student who has, who is going to present the research on influence of internal employee branding and organization trust.
on employee engagement in the IT industry. So, uh, Sashini Vasanthan, it's over to you. Today I'm, going Today I'm going to talk about the influence of internal employee branding and organizational trust on employee engagement in the IT industry in Sri Lanka. Research gap. Problem of the research is that various studies are covering the antecedents of employee engagement such as job satisfaction, job, uh, work life balance, intrinsic reward and extrinsic reward. But only limited research exists on, uh, on the impact of employee branding on employee engagement, especially in Sri Lankan IT industry. Therefore, in this study, mediating effect of organizational trust on internal brand employer branding and employee engagement was identified and analyzed. Uh, research, research questions. These are the research questions of this uh, study. Research objectives has, are to analyze the influence of internal employer branding activities on employee engagement. Analyze the influence of employer branding activities on organizational trust. Assess the influence of organizational trust on employee engagement and to analyze the factors that influence employee engagement. Scope of the study. IT company employees who are uh, in Colombo are at executive and non-executive level were investigated in this study. Uh, conceptual model. Conceptual framework. Independent variable of the study is internal branding activities and it has six uh, dimensions. Dependent variable of this study is em employee engagement and it has two uh, in uh, dimensions as uh, work engagement and organizational engagement and mediator variable is organizational trust. Uh, this is the critical evaluation of theory. Hypothesis development. For hypothesis one, there is a significant positive relationship between internal employer branding and organizational trust and this is explained by uh, social exchange theory. Hypothesis 2, there is a significant positive relationship between internal employer branding and employee engagement and this is a, a, a virtual circle of employee branding, social exchange theory, job demand, resources model, uh, talks about, uh, supports this uh, hypothesis. Uh, there hypothesis, hypothesis 3, there is a significant positive relationship between organizational trust and employee engagement. Social exchange theory and hero model talk about this theory. Hypothesis 4. Organizational trust mediates the relationship between employer branding and employee engagement and social, social exchange theory explains this. Uh, research methodology. Research philosophy. This study aims to answer the question on how internal branding activities affect the employee engagement and how Organizational trust mediates the relationship between internal employer branding and employee engagement. This study identifies and empirically tests this relationship and hence the research uh, study is uh, positivism. Research approach, approach is deductive as this study identifies the relationship between variable based on existing and uh, ex existing theories and hypotheses were developed to test this relationship. Quantitative research method was used to test this relationship. Research instrument development. A cross-sectional service cross-sectional survey was used to used and the survey instrument was designed by adapting measures used in prior empirical research studies. Five-point Likert scale ranging from strongly agreed to strongly disagree was used. Sampling strategy. Convenient sampling method was used where responses are collected from the members of the population who are conveniently available. Due to time constraint and easiness, this method was used. Uh, this method has been used by pre past researchers who have studied about internal employer branding, organizational trust and employee engagement. Sample size. Data was collected from employees at executive and non-executive level in any department who work for IT companies in Sri Lanka. Pilot study was carried out among 30 respondents to uh, check the clarity and understandability of the questionnaire initially and later questionnaire was distributed to 242 participants and 205 valid responses were collected. Justification of research instrument. As uh, 
Thorn Park Alpha value values are more than 0 0.7. Uh, it, the research instrument is reliable. Uh, construct validity, convergent validity, and discriminant validity, all three validity exist. Data analysis and representation. As these uh, values are within the threshold value, data distribution is normal. Missing values and outliers were not identified in their data set. Uh, as VIF uh, is less than 5 and tolerance values are more than 0 0.2, uh, multicollinearity does not exist. Correlation. As P value is less than 0 0.05 and R value is more than 0 0.5, the internal branding activities and organizational trust has a strong positive relationship. As uh, P value is more than 0 0.324, organizational trust and employee engagement do not have a significant uh, relationship. As P value is less than 0 0.05 and R value is more than 0 0.5, internal branding activities and employee engagement has strong positive relationship. Uh, as uh, significant value is uh, less than 0 0.05, it can be concluded that internal branding activities and organizational trust predict employee engagement signific significantly. Uh, based on the R value, we can determine that internal branding activities and organizational trust predict employee engagement 42.1% of the time. Uh, as significant values less than 0 0.05, internal branding activity and employee engagement has a significant relation, po significant positive relationship. As uh, organization trust has a significant value less than 0 0.05, uh, there is no si significant relationship between organizational trust and internal uh, employee engagement, and hypothesis three is rejected. Based on the Sobel test. Uh, P value is not uh, more than 0 0.05 and uh, hence uh, organization trust does not play a mediator effect between internal employer branding activities and employee engagement and hypothesis 4 is rejected. Uh, hypothesis testing. Hypothesis 1, a significant positive relationship between internal employer branding and organization trust is uh, accepted. So it is uh, important that uh, managers uh, align internal branding activities with company's value, culture, and mission while ensuring employees are feeling engaged, valued, and supported. Managers can conduct internal organizational research to gather data on current perception of internal employer branding and organizational trust. Managers should also consider company's val values, culture, and mission, how they align with employees' needs and expectations. Then manager can create unique and compelling employee value proposition that communicates the value gaining from uh, working in the organization including career development, uh, work-life balance and job uh, employee recognition. By following this, employee can create a strong uh, foundation of trust and engagement leading to employee satisfaction and loyalty. Hypothesis 2, a significant positive relation relationship between internal employee branding and employee engagement is accepted. So managers should focus on improving indicators of internal employee branding. Manag managers should uh, ensure open coming. Regarding again your sample, uh, sampling technique, convenient sampling, uh, B, <coughs> select convenient sampling technique not for your convenience. There is a reason for that. If you don't know the uh, population, actually that type of scenario, uh, in, in such scenarios you go for convenient sampling. So better to revert it and uh, tell us not, uh, don't, don't uh, select convenience use convenient sampling technique because it is convenient to you. Oh. Remember that. Yeah. Uh, that is, uh, that's enough, I think. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about many things. For the moment, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, thank you thank very you. much.
Thank you, Shashini. Um, so let me introduce the next presenter. Uh, she is actually presenting her final year project on the technology uh, business information systems. So mobile application solution to promote Sri Lankan food culture. Sara Ausata. So good afternoon everybody, I'm Sarah Hausotter and I will be discussing my research project Amula which is a mobile application solution to promote Sri Lankan food culture. So these will be the topics that I will be covering starting off with the problem domain. So Sri Lanka, also known as the Pearl of the Indian Ocean, was described by famous traveller Marco Polo as being for its size better circumstance than any island in the world. Teeming with an illustrious culture spanning thousands of years, Sri Lanka has gone on to establish an acclaimed travel and tourism industry. As explained on the slide, uh, tourism brings in a considerable portion of the nation's GDP. The sector began to first stabilize and then climb exponentially, going on to create a solid foundation in the cultural and heritage aspect. Sri Lanka also offers an incredible variety of food ranging from multiple cuisine types and offers amazing health benefits. Yet there is a disconnect in sharing this with an international audience. Food tourism or gastrotourism is a subtype of tourism which can be a powerful tool in creating a brand for a country. So this uh, fishbone diagram illustrates the causes that I have identified to affect the underutilization of the food culture in Sri Lanka as an income generator in the travel and tourism industry. So you can see there's lack of uh, initiative, lack of innovation, technology, rules and regulations, and external factors. So these uh, main courses have sub-courses, such as no knowledge on gastrotourism, packaging and marketing of food. There's also a noticeable lack of support, be it be uh, financial or resource acquisition. And there's also considerable pushback when it comes to digitization uh, from uh, both the government and private sectors, uh, along with outdated standards and practices. And finally, there were events such as the Easter Sunday attacks, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and so on, that all contribute to my problem statement. Uh, and this leads to my three research questions. First of all, identifying the gaps. And then, how can SMEs or small to medium enterprises generate revenue via gastrotourism? And finally, identifying the key requirements and create a product which can address these gaps. So basically, to summarize everything that I spoke about so far, the aim of this project was to analyze the underutilization of gastrotourism in Sri Lanka and design, develop, evaluate and test a business information solution that will allow tourists to experience authentic Sri Lankan gastronomy with full transparency while widening the market scope for SMEs. So starting off with my literature review, uh, the contents of these slides are extremely condensed uh, to highlight the main points of my literature review, starting off with the introduction of gastrotourism and its value. So uh, it is also known as food tourism or culinary tourism, and it is considered an exceptionally powerful tool in creating an, an, an identity for a country. It induces destination loyalty, which guarantees tourists revisiting due to positive experience, perhaps with local gastronomy, among other things. This will then bring in profit and then uplift the economy. Uh, in a more local context, uh, Sri Lanka has proven to have a strong culinary background. It has, uh, with its rich and extensive cuisine, it offers a plethora of health benefits and as mentioned on the slides, is considerably inclusive in terms of diet and allergenic restrictions. And finally, uh, the contribution of SMEs to the economy of Sri Lanka. Seeing how this sector brings in a huge portion of revenue, in fact it brings in, it comprises of 75% of the nation's air enterprises, it only makes sense to merge it with the tourism industry to create an even bigger audience via gastrotourism. However, for reasons such as uh, political unrest, lax rules and regulations, and general knack of knowledge 
on potential of gastrotourism, SMEs struggle to integrate with the global value chain. So this uh, diagram essentially uh, illustrates the intersectionality of these main sectors such as the travelers and tourism, so that is uh, tour operators, individual job roles and how they can uh, uh, in affect this type of uh, industry, uh, government initiatives and then food and beverages. It basically shows the entire scale from one single individual all the way to the government of a nation, how all of it can work together, collaborate and create uh, momentum in this type of initiatives. So I conducted a competitor analysis at the uh, initial stage of my project and I compared it with uh, four other existing platforms that are in this uh, similar domain and as you can see two of them are actually operating in Sri Lanka. Uh, however, they are sort of uh, localized to certain parts of the country and they sort of also lack transparency. For example, you cannot find out what are all the ingredients that goes into uh, a certain meal type that uh, is in the packages that they offer. So basically, uh, these were the parameters that I considered such as setting diet type, allergy triggers, browsing meal information and even image recognition, So, which I will touch upon later in my presentation. And next is my methodology. So there are, this happened in a twofold manner via questionnaires and interviews. So for questionnaires, my uh, user groups were tourists and vendors. And this was done via, uh, for a quantitative, uh, quantitative analysis purpose. So the online, uh, there was an online uh, vend survey which was available in English, Sinhala and Tamil for further reach. And uh, the tourist survey was both available physically and online, and it was in English and German. So there were 157 tourist responses and 33 vendor responses. So typically my cutoff for the tourists was 100 participants because I considered uh, the volume. So these tourists were from the uh, south region of the country, which is Bentara and Hikkadu, which is uh, very famous tourist hotspots. And then for the vendors, I considered estimated response rate and my cutoff was a minimum of 30 responses, which I have met with my 33. Following that, I also had a qualitative analysis with uh, my interviews and I contacted uh, three domain experts, uh, the former SLTDA chairperson, Ms. Kimali Fernando, Ms. Chamari Malge, who was the former director of Responsible Tourism, and Ms. Thisa Soisa, who is also very well versed in this domain. So um, this analysis led me to have a, a more in-depth uh, look into this uh, sector, followed by the findings and discussions. So one of the main findings was the lack of visibility of SMEs among tourists. So when it comes to this, uh, vendors need to be aware of the rules and regulations uh, without being, uh, having to be strictly enforced because it can be counterproductive. So if uh, the vendors are not able to deliver on the standards that uh, they are expected to, tourists won't also be very um, enthusiastic in uh, going to such stalls and trying out Sri Lankan food because if we are being honest, uh, it's a very different type of uh, food culture compared to what they're used to at home. So they won't be able to experience a, a very uh, authentic uh, start to finish a meal from Sri Lanka because they're unsure what goes into it, what are the ingredients, how is it prepared, and so on. And a lack of initiatives in gastronomy. So there, while there have been some initiatives uh, conducted to promote this, there's a significant gap in efforts still to this day to promote Sri Lankan cuisine both locally and internationally. And uh, finally, the presentation of these products need to meet international standards uh, especially due to strict food laws that hinder export opportunities. Sri Lanka is ex uh, quite behind when it comes to packaging of products, especially if they were to uh, join into the food souvenir uh, market, which is an extremely lucrative business and very popular in countries like Japan, but they're not exploiting that. They're not meeting the standards which can open an entire new revenue stream. So this is also leading on to my discussion uh, of the findings uh, from my empirical survey. So basically, most of the uh, participants from the tourist end were between 30 to 39 in age. And 91% um, of them actually said that they were pleasantly surprised by the food. 
which says that while they are enthusiastic in trying it, they're still hesitant to go out of their way to try because, like I said, a lack of transparency in ingredients and so on. Um, and ma majority of participants, as it says on the slides, are regular visitors to Sri Lanka, which means that there's uh, definitely a pull factor. Okay. Um, and I'll just, yes. So I did, in fact, uh, yeah, uh, develop a solution. So it is a mobile-based solution that considers uh, parameters such as diet type, intolerances, and so on. And it also has a ML model feature for image classification. So basically, in to highlight what this solution aims to do is to popularize spending at local uh, eateries in Sri Lanka, promoting the concept of food souvenirs, and creating a demand for Sri Lankan food internationally. And to just uh, talk about the main features, like I said, is the image classification. So this is an ML model which was trained by a data set that I had created myself because uh, while there's also a lack of research in Sri Lankan food, uh, no, I don't have it, but I just have the theory. Basically, the evaluations of my solution, the functional testing, user testing, how it received. Uh, uh, no, not uh, on the slide itself. Yeah, that wasn't in our guidelines. Yeah, we d I didn't mention it. It's on my uh, thesis, but it's not on the slide deck itself. Uh, just recommendations and, yeah. If you have done, if you can show us the data, then we can have some idea, right? Yeah, we were not uh, mentioned that we had to like show the, just like the research and what work went into prior the development essentially. Actually good. So I do have a business plan in place. I don't have that uh, exact slide on this. So I have a bunch of revenue streams in mind, which is a subscription uh, via uh, the user accounts. So for example, vendors can pay for a certain number of features and that will increase as the number of business requirements. So they want more complex analytics, for example, they'll have to pay more. They have more uh, product listings that they want to add. The cutoff is maybe 30 per, per, uh, per business. So the more you want to add, the more you'll have to pay essentially. Uh, from the tourist uh, end, there can also be a subscription uh, for maybe the number of uh, tries they can use the image classification model, the number of snapshots they can take, maybe limited to five, then they'll have to pay to continue using. Uh, subscription boxes, which is very popular in Japan. So every one month, every six months, you can have a customized box delivered to whichever country the tourist lives in. And it can be from like every region in Sri Lanka, from each district, what is the most popular 10 items in a box, in, uh, like in a basis that they can receive. So in their own home, in another country, they're creating a demand for Sri Lankan food uh, so that uh, we can solely enter integrate with the global value chain essentially and of obviously commissions so yeah that is something i've considered yeah uh, it actually shows the list of ingredients that went into it is it uh yes so it works like this so let's say there is a plate of kottu you take a picture and if it is trained to recognize the image it will say uh, for Per serving, this is the typical number of ingredients. These are the possible allergy triggers because there's only so much you can deduce from an image, right? There could be a variety of different kottu. There could be vegetable, beef, so on and so forth. So it gives like a very uh, comprehensive yet high level in a way outline of the possibilities. So at the end of the day, it's still an informed decision a human has to make. Do I eat this or do I not eat this? But the informed, the the components that goes into making the uh, informed decision is l all laid out for them. So a number of calories, such, yeah. Okay. Right, thank you, uh, Sara. Uh, so we have the last presenter for the evening today. Uh, she's also a business management student. So presenting influence of supervisor behavior and social support on employee well-being in the apparel industry of Sri Lanka, Osandi Udamalwat.
Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Masandi Odalamatta. It is an honor to present my research on influence of supervisor behavior and social support on employer well-being in the apparel industry of Sri Lanka. So the background of my study is uh, the apparel industry plays a significant role in Sri Lankan's economy by employing a large workforce. So in this industry can be demanding and challenging by exploring the relationship between the supervisor behavior, social support, and employee well-being in this context of the apparel industry in Sri Lanka. This research aims to provide valuable insights to both practitioners and policymakers. Overall, understanding the influence of supervisor behavior and social support on employee well-being in the apparel industry of Sri Lanka is essential for promoting a positive work environment, enhancing job satisfaction, and fostering the overall well-being of the employees. Uh, moving on to the research gap, uh, studies on employee well-being exist in general. There is a scarcity of research specifically conducted in the apparel industry of Sri Lanka. This research gap highlights the need for an in-depth examination of supervisor behavior and social support in this industry to better understand their impact on employee well-being. By addressing these research gaps, this study aims to provide a valuable insights into the influence of supervisor behavior and social support on employee well-being in the apparel industry of Sri Lanka. Moving on to the uh, scope of this study, uh, the scope of my study is limited to supervisor behavior investigated through apparel industry of Sri Lanka. It focuses on understanding how uh, the behavior of supervisors and the level of social support provided by them can affect the overall well-being of the employees working in this industry. Uh, so these are my research questions and these are my research objectives. So um, I have used three theories overall, uh, which is social exchange theory, conservation of resources theory, and behavior man management theory. Uh, social exchange theory has been used in this research because it provides a theoretical framework to understand the dynamic of relationship between supervisors and employees in the workplace. Moving on to the next theory, uh, Conservation of resources theory has been utilized in this research because uh, it offers a theoretical framework to understand the impact of supervisor behavior and social support on employee well-being. Moving on to the next, uh, behavioral management theory has been used in this research because it offers a valuable insights into understanding how supervisor behavior and in it impacts on employees' well-being. Uh, so the models, I have used three models, uh, which is uh, job demands resources theory, job characteristic uh, mo model, and uh, PERMA model. Uh, job demand resources model uh, uh, has been used in this theory uh, because it provides a comprehensive framework to understand the relationship between job characteristic resources and employee well-being. Moving on to the next, uh, job characteristic model has been used in this research because it provides a framework of understanding how specific job characteristics can influence employees' outcomes, including their well-being. Uh, the PERMA framework has been used in this uh, because it provides a comprehensive model for understanding and measuring the individual well-being of the employees. So this is my conceptual framework. Uh, as you can see, my independent variable uh, is a supervisor behavior, and I have a mediator, which is social support, and my dependent variable is employee well-being. For the hypotheses, uh, all these hypotheses were uh, 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 come from the, the previous uh, researchers, and also the uh, theoretical frameworks. And this is my operationalization ta table. Uh, independent variable is supervisor behavior, and the media is uh, social support. And the employee's well-being is my dependent variable. 
and uh, research methodology. Uh, the research methodology employed in this study involves collecting and analyzing data to address the research objectives. It typically follows a quantitative uh, research approach. Overall, uh, research methodology aims to gather empirical evidence, analyze data, sorry, and uh, data quantitatively and draw conclusions about the influence of supervisor behavior and social support on employee well-being in the apparel industry of Sri Lanka. Um, moving on to the next. Uh, uh, population of this study is 580 apparel, in the apparel sector operational level employees of uh, MS Active Trading, MS Intimates, Hydram International Exports, and Omega Line. Uh, the sampling technique I have used was convenience sampling method because the way of collecting uh, data was easily accessible. Uh, as I mentioned you earlier, uh, this is my the s sample selection. Uh, and these are my sample number of operational level workers and the number of respondents I have gathered. And as you can see, the total number of uh, respondents was 69 percent. Uh, for data collection, uh, the structured questionnaire is designed and captured information related to supervisor behavior, social support, and employee well-being. Among the targeted uh, 300 samples, 207 usable responses were collected. Data analysis. Uh, this is my normal test results. And as you can see in this analysis, the p-value was greater than 0 0.05. And because of that, the data distributed can be considered normal. For the reliability, I have conducted all uh, three var uh, variables. And as you can see in this chart, uh, my uh, Conbrafa value is for the whole uh, instrument was 0 0.949 out of uh, three number of items. Sample adequacy, uh, according to the validity and the reliability statistic, KMO measure is used to determine the whether the sample is adequate, and it was 0 0.743, exceeding the threshold value of 0 0.5. Hence, the sample is adequate. And I have conducted uh, construct validity, convergent validity, and discriminant validity. Demographic analysis, as you can see in this chart, uh, most of the age uh, respondents uh, was the age between 20 and 30 years. And it can, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, the next chart, uh, the most of the respondents uh, I have received are female category. In this chart, you can see the marital status and most of the employees are single, and uh, according to the data, I have received 56.5 uh, are single and 16.43 are married. And as you can see in the next chart, uh, most of the employees are in the helper category. And the responded feedbacks for the Likert scale questions are discussed in descriptive statistic. Um, and in this, uh, this is the summary of uh, correlation. Based on the p-value, there is a statistically significant relationship between supervisor and social support. Based on the p-value, uh, there is a stat statistically significant relationship between supervisor behavior and employee well-being. And also the based on the p-value, there is a statistically significant relationship between social support and employee well-being. Regression analysis uh, explain the impacts of independent variable on dependent variable. As you can see in this uh, an over table, the p-value is less than 0 0.05, and hence there is a significant relationship between dependent and ind independent variables. And the supposed behavior makes the largest contributions to the dependent variables. And as you can see, the beta in this chart, beta beta value is uh, 0 0.657. Uh,
and as you can see in this chart, uh, the supervisor behavior and social support predicts the employee well-being by 86.8%. Uh, uh, this is the mediator analysis I have conducted. Uh, and these are my hypothesis testing, and all uh, four hypotheses uh, were accepted. And in conclusion, all these uh, research objectives were identified. And this is my regression equation. And uh, for the recommendations, uh, supervisors need to give special attention to their employees because uh, they have their behaviors impact on employees, both physical and mental health. For the future areas, uh, I have conducted this study based on the apparel industry, so I'm uh, s suggesting that we can expand this uh, research to the other industries as well. Also, uh, this study can conduct to examine the long-term effects on supervisor behavior and social support on employee well-being. Also, this would provide insights into stabili stability of their relationship over the time and potentially uncover the cumulative e effects on positive and neg negative experiences. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Actually, we have the common common comments, right? So there is no any special comments to your presentation. Uh, I hope that uh, whatever the comments we gave to the previous presenters, because uh, the presentation are basically identical, right? So the common, those are, I don't say mistakes, but uh, th those are our comments, right? Now just say, for example, the sample size, then, uh, you know, uh, mixing number of theories, right? Uh, then, uh, uh, then you simplify the model. You create a model, very detailed model, but analysis very simplified. So those are the common issues, right? So other than that, uh, we don't find any uh, big issues here. Good presentation, thank you. Thank you for the brief, thanks. Thank you, and thank you, Ms. Kamudini, for chairing that uh, session. And now I would like to invite Professor Nalaka Vikramasinghe to present the token of appreciation to Ms. Kamudini. Can we have a big round of applause? Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity opportunity to uh, thank our uh, our panel, um, Dr. Thissa Ravinder, Dr. Kaushalya Yatigamana, and Professor Razi for your valuable comments. And I would also like to thank uh, my senior brothers and sisters for uh, I think you have succeeded in uh, keeping the standards, keeping our standards, and raising that bar high. So when we as juniors come to your place um, uh, we have some challenge to do so i'm really proud of you and thank you for your valuable and very um, wonderful uh, research papers it was very informative and now for the rest of the proceedings i would like to invite all of you to uh, move to the main ballroom for the panel discussion and the rest of the proceedings thank you The internet is powered by fiber. It's nothing like those days. Connections without delays or interruptions. Quite unlike those days. 
the pinnacle of picture quality. An ultra fast superpower. It's nothing quite like those days. Sri Lanka's first, fastest, and widest premium fiber network. SLT Mobitel Fiber, the fiber of the nation. Imagine a technology partner invested in your dreams where we take the time to understand your aspirations and give you the opportunity to transform them into reality through disruptive innovation. We are Asiata Digital Labs. We are a team of IT professionals, data scientists, cloud solution specialists, creative design engineers, Spanning seven global offices, we are enriching the lives of over half a billion people. We have successfully delivered projects globally, specializing in digital telco solutions, mobile money, fintech, IoT, AI, machine learning, data analytics, and self-care solutions. Using our expertise and domain knowledge, we have helped challenge the norms of industries and rewrite the rules of engagement. We provide our customers with agility. We provide them future-ready products now. Asiata Digital Labs, advancing digital life. The world is changing rapidly in front of our eyes. While new technologies are being built, tons of data is created every second. Industry needs are changing and businesses need to innovate ever so fast. Are you equipped to face the transformations taking place around you? We can help you achieve it. That is what inspires us. This is Limark Technologies. We're a talented and experienced pool of software architects, engineers and data scientists have come together to produce world-class software solutions. We are a global technology company specializing in product engineering, data analytics, DevOps, quality engineering, IAT and cloud frameworks and our unique service model of CTO Office as a service. Limark Technologies, for a mark of excellence.